Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on antenna. On my part three series discussion, as well as part four, I have discussed on the key parameters of antenna. This video, I'm going to continue the discussion on the parameters of antenna. This video, I'm going to explain the meaning of antenna directivity. In short, I'm going to have three antenna. And basically, I'm going to share with you how can I actually conclude that this antenna, for example, has a better directive as compared to the other two. So basically, this will be the objective of this video is to easily determine which antenna actually has a better directivity as compared to the rest. So basically, this is what we hope to achieve for this video. This will be the part five series discussion on antenna. So guys, if you're keen to know more about antenna, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on antenna. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, I strongly urge you guys to ask me your question through the comment. Okay, so this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, okay, ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, I like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. This is what we have discussed on the part three series discussion. I have mentioned about radiation pattern. On the part four, I have discussed on antenna gain. So basically, antenna gain is actually equal to efficiency multiplied by directivity. So from here, you can see a key difference between gain and directivity. Okay, so the next video, I'm going to focus on bin width. But in this video, I'm going to explain the key difference between directivity and also the bin width. Okay, there is actually quite a significant difference between these two. So basically, this will be also the objective of this video. Let's quickly understand what is actually an antenna directivity. Okay, a fundamental property of an antenna, okay, in fact, is its ability to focus power in a given direction to the exclusion of other direction. Okay, so basically, in short, you just imagine why we need to have antenna. For example, let's say we have a point-to-point -point delivery. Okay, so therefore, the antenna need to be able to focus the direction. Okay, so in short, since I know the direction of the receiver, then why not I focus my antenna to focus just to transmit in that particular direction since this is a point-to-point -point delivery. So with this, you can see that the receiver will have a higher chances to receive the signal from the transmitter. Hence, because of this, this is a key parameter for antenna is how they actually able to focus their power in a certain direction. So basically, this is a simple definition about directivity. Okay, the measure of the focusing ability of an antenna is the directivity, defined as the ratio of the maximum radiation intensity in the main loop. So from here, you can see that this is actually the maximum radiation intensity in the main loop okay, over the average radiation intensity over all space. So this is actually the average radiation intensity okay, all over the space here. So basically, in short, this is a very simple so-called definition of directivity. From here, you can see that it's basically the maximum radiation intensity over the average radiation intensity. Next, okay, we know that this average radiation intensity is basically equals to the total power that is radiated up by the transmitter okay, divided by 4 pi. So in short, this is actually the average radiation intensity. This is the power that is actually radiated up by the antenna, for example, here. So in order to achieve the average radiation intensity, I take the power that radiated up divided by 4 pi. Okay, so basically, this average radiation intensity can sub inside here. So therefore, I rearrange the formula. Okay, basically, this term here is basically P radiation over 4 pi. So I shift the 4 pi to the top. Okay, so basically, this is another simple definition of 
directivity. So from here, you can see that directivity is actually a function of maximum radiation intensity over the power that you actually radiate out. So in short, okay, why, how, how can we actually determine the directivity? For example, okay, for example, for this case here, the power that I radiate out, let's say I remain constant. Okay, let's say I radiate out in a certain number, let's say one watt. And basically, you can see that the bigger the number, which is the maximum radiation intensity, the better will be the directive. So in short, the bigger the number, okay, which is the maximum radiation intensity, the better the directivity of the antenna. While I remain the P radiate at a constant number, let's say one watt. Okay, I remain this power that you actually read out at one watt. However, okay, based on different direction, okay, you actually have different value of maximum radiation intensity. So in short, the bigger the number of this, the bigger the antenna directivity. Okay, let me quickly give you some example in order to understand better. So for example, for this case here, okay, I'm going to do this versus this. In short, you can see that this is A0 sine theta okay, versus A0 sine squared theta. So from here, I'm going to explain which one actually has a better antenna directivity. So basically, we make it easier okay, by assume that A0 equals to 1. Okay, so this A0 will be equals to 1 and it will be disappeared. Okay, we can see that okay, both patterns are actually OMI direction, okay, which means that they actually radiate 360 degree here. So basically, this is what it means, OMI direction. However, okay, at A0 sine squared theta, okay, so basically you can see here, okay, so this is sine squared theta in a black solid line. Okay, as for this sine theta is actually so-called the parameters okay, of the circle here. Okay, so basically you can see that, okay, as I mentioned, that both patterns, they are actually all OMI direction. However, you can see that this A0 sine squared theta okay, is actually more directive characteristics in the elevation plane. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, for example, if you still remember, okay, the formulas to talk about directivity is, is actually the maximum radiation intensity over the average. Keep this in mind. Okay, so basically from here, you can see that, let's do this sine squared theta here. Okay, so basically you can see that this number, okay, is smaller as compared to the sine theta. So the sine theta is basically this area here. And let's say the maximum point is here. So basically you can see that this is a perfect so-called circle, so basically they will be equals to one. You can see here, the average and also the so-called the maximum. Okay, however, if you take a look on this sine squared theta here, which is the black solid line, okay, you can see that this thing is actually smaller. It's not longer a circle. So from here, you can see that this point here, which is the maximum radiation intensity, is, is much bigger as compared to the average point. So hence from here, I conclude that sine squared theta actually has a better antenna directive as compared to sine theta. So basically, this is what it means over here. Okay, since the directivity is a figure of merit, describe how well the radiator direct energy in a certain direction, it should be convincing that this figure, okay, from this figure, we can see that the directivity of A0 sine squared theta should be higher than A0 sine theta. So in short, over here, you can see that this sine squared theta will have a better antenna directivity as compared to sine theta. Okay, let's quickly understand, okay, basically, this antenna directivity is a dimensionless, which means that they don't actually have any SI unit. However, okay, most of the time, we actually express the antenna directivity okay, as dB, okay, as illustrated over here. Okay, it's just for the convenience. But in short, basically, they don't have any SI unit. But most of the time, we actually want to like to express this antenna di directivity okay, in a decibel. Next, okay, I'm going to do another example. Okay, another example will be sine cube theta here. Okay, to demonstrate the significance of directivity, okay, let's us consider another example. Okay, in particular, let us examine the directivity of a half wavelength dipole. Okay, so basically this is a half wavelength dipole here. You can see over here, basically in this diagram here, okay, this A0 sine theta is basically compared against isotropic source. Okay, so basically this is the 2D, this is actually the 3D. Let's quickly understand this here. So you can see that this line portion here is actually by the dipole antenna. 
Okay, you can see that the shaded region is actually the isotropic source, okay, which means that they receive the power evenly, as you can see from here. Okay, from here, you can clearly see that okay, this point is much, much bigger as compared to the average point here. So basically, in short, over here, you can conclude that this sine cube theta actually has a much more better antenna directive as compared to the other two that we have described early on, okay, based on just the 2D blocks here. So from these 3D blocks, okay, so basically, you, you can just imagine this is a Earth, let's say. Okay, so basically, this is actually an isotropic source here. And this is actually the sine cube theta here. Okay, so this thing here. So from here, you can see that they actually has a better directive as compared to the isotropic. Or maybe from here, you can conclude that for this case here, they are actually better than sine theta cube or sine squared theta. So basically, in short, I conclude that sine cube theta actually has the best antenna directive as compared to sine theta and also sine squared theta. Okay, so basically, this is how you can tell which antenna actually has a better directive. Okay, so before I continue, okay, I would like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me by press the like button now. If you have learned something from this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. I really appreciate your effort. Thank you so much, guy. Let's quickly understand the key difference between directivity and also antenna gain. Okay, so basically earlier on, I have mentioned that antenna gain is actually also in terms of efficiency. In short, antenna gain is actually efficiency multiplied by directivity. So basically, this is the key difference. Okay, as you can see from here, directivity can be easily estimated from pattern. Okay, gain is actually directivity multiplied by efficient, okay, which I have mentioned just now before the start of this video. Okay, if you want to understand a little bit more on the gain, okay, feel free to go back to the so-called the playlist to understand this better. Okay, so next I'm going to explain the key difference between pin width and also directivity. Okay, so basically this pin width and directivity, they are both measure of an antenna focusing ability. Okay, which means that they focus to measure how directive the antenna is basically in short here. Basically, how how well this antenna actually can concentrate the power in a certain direction. Okay, so an antenna pattern with a narrow main pin will have high directivity. As I mentioned earlier on, if you can have very narrow, very, very narrow main pin, then therefore you can imagine that most of the power actually radiate at this particular direction. And hence, because of this, they are actually conclude to have a higher directive. Okay, while a pattern with a wide pin, you can imagine that if it's a torch light that you actually pin up in a very wide angle here. So therefore, from here, you can see that we actually has a lower directivity. Okay, we might therefore expect a direct relationship between pin width and directivity. Okay, but in fact, there is no exact relationship between these two quantities. Basically, in short, okay, as I mentioned earlier on, if we have a narrow beam width, then we can conclude that it will be a better directive as compared to the wide beam width, for example, for this case here. But as he mentioned here, there is no exact relationship, but I will conclude that they actually has a strong relationship, but not 100% that they actually have obeyed this relationship. Okay, let me explain this. This is because beam width depends only on the size and also the shape of the main beam. As as I mentioned earlier, you just imagine for beam width, okay, how much will be the beam width is mainly on the size. Okay, how, what are the size that they actually want to serve and also the shape of the main beam. Okay, whereas directivity involves integration of the entire radiation pattern. In short, basically directivity actually emphasize on the whole entire radiation pattern. Thus, it is possible for many different antenna pattern to have the same band pin width, okay, but quite different directivity due to the different inside loop or the presence of more than one main bin. Okay, imagine if we have lots of main bin. Okay, so basically imagine we build a antenna that have can be radiate up many so-called main beam. Okay, so basically from here you can see that 
when you actually have a lot of main beam, okay, so basically the average also will be reduced. Okay, because beam width is mainly focused how so-called focused they can be, okay, but they never consider all the possible radiation pattern. But for directivity, they actually confirm these characteristics through the whole of radiation pattern. So in short, any antenna, they may have different direction. So basically, they need to consider all these factors here. So as illustrated over here. Okay, with this qualification in mind, however, it is possible to develop approximate relationship between beam width and directivity. As I told you that most of the time, these two things are highly correlated. Okay, they apply with reasonable accuracy to a large number of practical antenna. Okay, except that, for example, this antenna is actually multiple mode, okay, which means that they actually transmit different beam. Okay, so therefore, in short, okay, basically, this beam width and directivity, they are very, very close related. In short, the smaller the beam width, the better the directivity. Okay, you can say this. Okay, however, for directivity, okay, imagine this, we can have more than one main loop. And once we have more than one main loop, the average will be affected. So basically, this is a very simple definition, the key difference between beam width and directivity. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so let's do a very quick conclusion okay, on the antenna directivity. Okay, high directivity indicate that an antenna can actually concentrate its radiation in a particular direction. Okay, so this is what I have always emphasized, high directivity, okay, which means that the antenna can better focus their radiation pattern in a certain direction, okay, which is useful for applications such as radar, satellite communication, and point-to-point -point radio link. Okay, which you can imagine. So basically, in short, for example, for radar, you need to know a certain direction. So therefore, the antenna must be able to focus, which means that they need to have a high directivity. Same for satellite communication. Okay, for example, you definitely know where is the location of a satellite. So therefore, you actually so-called concentrate your antenna in a particular direction okay, so that you will be pretty sure that the signal will have a higher chances to reach up to the satellite, for example, for this case here. Same as point to point, which I have illustrated also. Okay, low directivity implies more omidirection radiation, okay, which is beneficial for broadcast application. Okay, for example, here you just imagine, for example, I'm going to broadcast a FM. Okay, I can't have directivity, okay, which means that I can't focus my energy on a certain target area. Okay, because I what I want to achieve is everybody can receive this broadcast. So hence for this type run, basically we need to have low directivity, which means that everybody will be able to receive this signal, for example. Then they actually are more omidirection radiation as compared to the directive antenna. Okay, with this, i like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.